It's a pleasure now for me to present another of our graduating seniors who will introduce our commencement speaker. Brittany Essio. Brittany Essio is a business administration major from Warrington, Virginia. Good afternoon. <laughs> it is my honor to introduce our 2014 commencement speaker, a role model for us all and personally for me as a woman, and most importantly, a fellow spider, Gail Goodson Butler. Ms. Butler is a prominent leader in the field of media and communications. As president of the University of Richmond Alumni Association, she is also the leader of spiders around the globe. A native of Virginia, Ms. Butler graduated from the university in 1973 and began her career in communications as press secretary for a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Since 1983, she has been with Meredith Corporation, the leading media and marketing company focused on women. Meredith is the publisher of 18 magazine brands focusing on family, home, health, and personal development, with a combined circulation of 30 million. Ms. Butler rose steadily through the Meredith ranks and is today executive vice president and creative content leader for the National Media Group and Editor-in-Chief of the Better Homes and Gardens brand. Better Homes and Gardens boasts one of the largest print circulations of any paid subscription magazine in the country, a testament to Ms. Butler's leadership in a time of challenges for print media. She has also ensured that Meredith is, Meredith is at the fore of changes in the media industry, creatively embracing opportunities from digital publishing to social media, to partnering with major retailers on exclusive lines of decor under the Better Homes and Gardens brand. In 2012, Better Homes and Gardens was named Adweek's hottest magazine for women and cited for its outstanding social media program. Ms. Butler has brought this same strong and creative leadership to her role as the president of our alumni association, or Spider-in-Chief. Elected to the URAA board in 2009, she became president of the Alumni Association last summer. As president, she has literally traveled the country to talk to fellow spiders, fostering their engagement with the university and engaging them on behalf of students. Ms. Butler and the URAA have been especially committed to enlisting alumni and helping students prepare for internships and jobs and build their professional networks and to encouraging alumni to hire spiders by providing internship and job opportunities for today's students. I think it's safe to say that many of us here have benefited from her leadership in this area, and I know that makes her especially popular with the parents here today. Ms. Butler also continues to be a true champion of West Hampton College, from her service as an active member of student government during her time here at the university to just last week, when she spoke at a West Hampton Centennial event in New York City. And Ms. Butler embodies the commitment to civic engagement that has become integral to so many of our lives here at Richmond, and which we will sustain in our lives beyond Richmond. She is actively involved in her community of Des Moines as a member of boards and as a volunteer for Rebuilding Together, which provides housing to families in need. In short, in her professional achievements, her dedication to her community, and her lifelong leadership on behalf of the university, she provides an inspiring role model for the class of 2014 today. Fellow members of the class of 2014, please join me in welcoming Gail Goodson Butler. Thank you, Brittany, for that very warm introduction and for the new title of Spider-in-Chief. I kind of like the sounds of that. Class of 2014, it is such a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you today on what is certainly a most meaningful turning point in your lives and a starting point in your lives. 41 years ago, 
I sat exactly where you sit today as a member of the first class to graduate in the Robbins Center. And today it is my honor to address the first class to graduate since its renovation. As Kelly said, full of a new vision and new possibilities. I really like the symmetry of that because it speaks to the continuity and the evolution that underlie the life of a university and of its graduates. I started my relationship with this university in 1969, when this was a much different place. About a third of our campus buildings had not yet been built. Our student body was not as beautifully diverse as the faces I see before me. And in the coordinate education system of the day, famously, men and women lived and dined separately and on opposite sides of the lake. We had no World Cup Quidditch team. <laughs> and saddest of all, we did not have a pig roast. <laughs> but the fundamentals of a University of Richmond education were already here. We had small classes, we had caring faculty, and we had high expectations for excellence and for intellectual curiosity. And as a tall, rather shy girl from Southern Virginia, I was especially drawn to the leadership opportunities provided by West Hampton College. Those open doors first helped me believe that I might be a leader, and then helped me experience being a leader. And I have always been grateful for that. As West Hampton approaches its 100th centennial, I am thankful that those opportunities still exist. And I'm even prouder that today, an emphasis on leadership is infused in all five of our schools with our remarkable and extraordinary Jepson School of Leadership Studies as a beacon. As members of the class of 2014, you have been immersed in a culture that believes in your potential for leadership and accomplishment. You have particularly benefited from the tenets of the Richmond Promise, an exceptional pledge whose commitments include a rigorous and interdisciplinary learning environment, rich experiences in and out of the classroom, engagement with the community, a commitment to making a Richmond education accessible to talented young people, regardless of financial circumstances, and a defining spirit of opportunity with an authentic culture of diversity. Implicit in this portion of the promise is that every member of our community will be valued and respected for who they are as individuals. Much progress has been made during your time here, and we will be at our very best as a university when that goal is fully realized in every corner of university life. The sum of the Richmond Promise is that you leave this university having acquired not only tremendous knowledge, but also a sharper vision of who you are and who you want to be. And today, you are entering a new phase of your life that I assure you will be every bit as transformational as the college experience. In this period, you will be deciding what are the promises I will make to myself and how will I honor them? And also, how will I honor those who have helped me come this far? And I hope that begins today with a word of thanks to them for all that they have done for you. Over the next few years, you will construct your own framework for a satisfying and successful life. The University of Richmond experience has prepared you well. So my message to you today is, take the best of that experience with you. Here are five new promises for your consideration. First, seek your purpose. A Richmond education prepares you to lead a life of purpose. That is written right in our mission statement. And you are part of a generation that particularly cares about purpose. You embrace causes. You demonstrate concern for our environment. You hold yourself and businesses to high standards of social responsibility. You want to make a difference in the world. And we thank you for that. 
because it needs your improvements. But as much as we may desire it, sometimes clarity about our individual purpose can be elusive. There are few people who are lucky enough just to know what it is, and some people find it in a purposeful first job. But for most of us, a sense of purpose develops over time through trial and learning and the variety of the experiences that we collect. So, as you seek purpose, give yourself the permission of time and open-mindedness about where you might find it. Let me take a moment to share my own career path, an abbreviated version. After graduation from Richmond, as you heard, I took my first job working on Capitol Hill, and then I spent several years working in corporate communications. Before I was 30, I was managing a department and overseeing significant projects. I was doing well, but I never felt that I was doing good, and I was not enjoying the work. So when I had a chance to join Better Homes and Gardens, I jumped at it, even though it meant a more junior role. And by junior role, I mean I was sometimes the person unpacking the boxes and fetching the lunch at the photo shoots. Consider me an early adopter of what one author, author has recently described as the jungle gym approach, where we sometimes move sideways or even backwards to find a clear path forward. In a junior role, I recognized an opportunity to move into a career that actually used more of my talents, would be more satisfying, and served a purpose that I find quite meaningful, which is helping people live a more colorful and creative life. And just as I hoped, the skills I learned in my earlier career helped me advance in my new ones. You never know how the pieces are going to come together. There are many avenues to purpose. One of my fellow members on the alumni board is Michael Weiss, class of 09, who works on Wall Street in a demanding position with Barclays. But on most Saturdays, you will find Michael teaching math skills to at-risk teens. He joins enrichment networking events and speaks with prospective students. Michael serves on the board of a nonprofit that supports sustainable living in Mozambique. And last year, he organized a running team that raised thousands of dollars for medical research. Michael Weiss represents legions of spiders who live purposefully through philanthropy, activism, spirituality, and personal influence. Seek your purpose, follow your instincts, and walk through the open doors. The second promise is to be bold. Bold is a point of spider pride and part of our vernacular. The university is boldly generous in its need-blind admissions and its generous financial aid. We are boldly innovative in academic programs. Our president, Dr. Edward Ayers, set a personal example of boldness in his dialogue with the city of Richmond about its historic past. Embrace your bold. It is a valuable characteristic at a time when traditional career paths are not always clearly marked and not necessarily desired. Today, technology enables us to invent our own future, either as entrepreneurs or within organizations. If you wish to be inspired, look no further than other recent graduates. Here are a few. Elizabeth Hoppinger Thompson, class of 2000, who co-founded Envision Leadership in Boston with three fellow Jepson grads. Their programs have made a difference for 80,000 students in 30 countries. Chris Hamby, class of 08, who won this year's Pulitzer Prize for investigative journalism by doggedly pursuing the story, and I'm going to quote from the Pulitzer citation here, of how some lawyers and doctors rigged a system to deny benefits to coal miners stricken with black lung disease. His series is online at the Pulitzer website and merits your reading. Zoe Romano, class of 09, who will receive the Distinguished Young Alumni Award later this year, she ran the rugged Tour de France over 2,000 miles to raise money for the World Pediatric Project while also calling to the attention, yes, also calling attention to the fact that women cannot compete in the Tour de France, although a women's race has been added this year.
Mark Spera and Dean Rabbitin, class of 10, who started Be Good Clothing in San Francisco to sell lines on only lines that meet high eco and social responsibility standards. And one more, Chaz Barracks, class of 11, who has combined international teaching with globe-spanning outreach to mentor LGBT youth based on his own adversity growing up. Each of these individuals pursued an authentic passion and they applied the skills they learned here at Richmond to create success. I know that there are and will be many more stories like this from the class of 2014. Recently, I participated on some panels in women's leadership, including the recent one in New York, and boldness is a recurring topic. Reliably, one or more of the panelists expresses the wish that we had been bolder sooner instead of second-guessing ourselves and questioning our right to speak. Men and women of the class of 2014, timidity is the enemy of success. Today, organizations and businesses are hungry for new ideas, innovations, solutions, for new ways of looking at things. And in most organizations, you will find smart, clear thinkers who have valuable ideas. Perhaps they're a little on the quiet side because they don't offer them up. They wait to be asked. Don't wait to be asked. When you have valuable ideas, bring them forward. Let me share an example from my workplace. Uh, thank you, Brittany, for mentioning that Better Homes and Gardens has been recognized as a leader in social media, something we are quite proud of, and particularly for our innovation on Pinterest. And how did that happen? It started when two very junior editors discovered an intriguing new social platform that they thought had promised. And they came forward with a well-reasoned proposal for us to participate. Today, because we were there early, we have more than 46 million of our images pinned and repinned on Pinterest. And we have been able to pilot new programs all because someone with a good idea came forward. And to this day, those two junior editors, now advanced in their career, are considered rock stars. Find your voice, pick your moment, and own your bold. The third promise is to stay whole. One of the hallmarks of a really excellent education is that you emerge from it with a more mature and integrated view of your best self, your aspirations, your ethics and beliefs, and the things that you, that things that you do that keep you whole, where you find your balance, and how all those pieces fit together. Wholeness is a healthy state, and I know you feel the goodness of that today. So I have a suggestion for you. Before you leave this campus today, or by tomorrow at the latest, write down the elements of your healthy state today. Think of it as a written selfie. The goal is not to freeze you in time, the goal is to encourage you to think about the things that are important to you and what keeps you whole so that you could hang on to those. Because the happiest adults I know, and many of the very most successful, pay attention to what is important to them. They notice how it changes over time, and they rebalance when necessary. So don't lose the balance. If you are a runner, run. If you are a singer, sing. Do whatever it is that brings you joy and keeps you whole. Integrity is at the center of wholeness, because who can be in a healthy state without integrity? Express it in the things you say, practice it in the things you do, and in your fair-mindedness of thinking. Resist its erosion through omissions and shortcuts for quick gain. And know that a reputation for integrity Sustained over time is a gold standard prerequisite for senior leadership positions. 
Should you wake up one day and discover that somehow you've gotten off track, forgive yourself, but correct your course. Stay whole. The fourth promise, keep getting smarter. For the past few years, you have been at the center of an education ecosystem that is carefully and artfully crafted to help you acquire knowledge and develop critical thinking skills. Think of those benefits not as mission accomplished, but as good habits to take with you. Because anything else today is not really a viable option. Technology and its close friend innovation are driving transformation on a grand and global scale. They are disrupting the old, they're iterating the new, and they're making everything more interconnected and therefore much more complex. At the same time, technology and innovation are enabling incredible advances in what we accomplish and what we know. So the world keeps getting smarter and requiring smarter at the same time. The same forces are reshaping workplace cultures. For example, my industry, the media industry, is one of the most transformed by the digital revolution. Today, we can create and publish content and personalize it for the consumer, send it out in multiple digital platforms for multiple devices. We can tell our stories not only in words and pictures, but in videos and audios and animations and interactive tools. It is an editor's dream, but it is extremely complex. So at Meredith, we've had to rethink We've got to tear down silos in our organization, open up the decision-making process, and create new synapses in the organizational brain so that we can take advantage of those opportunities. And the heroes in this new workplace culture are those who can collaborate to bring together diverse points of view, to think clearly, and to advance the best ideas and solutions for the organization. So in a modern world, being smarter means being smarter about collaboration. The fifth promise is to keep connected. You have made incredible connections here with faculty, with staff, with your friends. And may I say that the friendships you make in college are like no others. Unless human nature has changed over 41 years, you and your friends have had amazing and meaningful conversations about life and the way you want to live it. You've helped each other move past roadblocks and heartbreaks and self-doubt. And you have had a lot of fun together. Listening to Kelly, I think it's possible you have invented forms of fun never seen on campus before. And now, today, you share a bond of accomplishment that will last a lifetime. Now, you go on different paths. Keep those connections. Text, call, meet up, reunite, pick up the phone, whatever it is, stay connected and not just for the first couple of years. Because for a lifetime, when you need to talk to someone who really knows you well, you can pick up the phone, and call your best spider friend and pick up that conversation exactly where you left off. And that kind of friendship only appreciates with age. You also share a connection with 50,000 spiders around the world. And wherever you are, when a spider meets a spider, that commonality of experience breaks through our protective coding and we are able to connect. That is why much of the work of your alumni association is bringing people together by region, by professional interest, for networking, for fun, and uniting us in a common cause to provide opportunities for today's students and future generations. Engage. You have a lifelong opportunity to grow, thrive, and stay connected through a community that already knows you and loves you well and will always welcome you. Class of 2014, not so long ago, you first arrived on campus with a mix of excitement, anticipation, ambition, and a few unexpressed fears. Perhaps that is not so dissimilar from the emotions you are feeling today. But in your time here, you gained important perspective. 
you know that some things will be more challenging than you expected, and some things will take longer than you expected, and other things will be more rewarding than you ever expected if you stay open to the possibilities. As you venture into the world, know that it will be a lot like that too. You are ready. You are incredibly prepared. You are among the brightest minds of your generation. You can make the difference you want to make. Seek your purpose, be bold, stay whole, keep getting smarter, and keep connected. Class of 2014, commence. Go Spiders! Thank you, Gail. We very much appreciate your being with us today and your thoughtful address and for the example you provide our graduates and for the personal friendship that you've shown me over the years.